guys, what's up and welcome back to my channel and welcome to another foundation review video. So another highly, highly requested product today and it's actually a relaunched product. Um, it's the brand new Huda Beauty Faux Filter Luminous Matte Foundation. So everything that I can gather, basically this is like the new and improved formula of the old Faux Filter one and it sounds like it's meant to be absolutely amazing. Uh, listen to this. So it says waterproof, super long wear, 24 hour wear, transfer proof, fade proof, sweat proof and humidity proof. And they have also reformulated this new one without fragrance. Now, if you remember, maybe you do, maybe you don't. I did review the original Faux Filter Foundation when it came out and the fragrance was like, oh. <laughs> It was so intense. I feel it was like a floral rose kind of fragrance and it just like you could literally smell it on your skin all day. I did also have quite a lot of issues with the original formula. It got really, really cakey. It really separated like my oily skin just did not like it at all. But this new one sounds like perhaps it's going to be a dream for oily skin. So yeah, we're going to be reviewing this one today. I'm going to do it how I always do it, you guys. So we'll apply it. I'll do wear tests and check-ins. We'll show it nice and up close on my skin. And hopefully my skin reacts to it a little bit nicer. <laughs> I'm hoping to wear it for about 12 hours to give it a really good chance to... You know, we're going to see how it goes on my skin. So if you're interested in seeing an in-depth, straight up, honest review of the brand new Huda Beauty Faux Filter Foundation, then please keep on watching. And also make sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. Okay, let's do it. Now, like I said, the original Faux Filter Foundation just did not work for me at all. Um, I'm an oily skin type and it just, it showed up all the texture. It really caked, it separated. You could like literally see patches of skin, like my skin coming through the foundation. It was just a hot mess. I will link um, the original review video down below if you're interested in seeing that. So really excited to test this one out. Um, I'm fresh out of the shower. My hair is still wet. It just got delivered in the mail and I was like, oh, okay. Everyone's been requesting this. I ordered it off Sephora Australia, by the way. I think it was about 61 Australian dollars. It does retail for 40. US dollars. You can buy it from Sephora or you can buy it from the Huda Beauty website. And yes, it just came in the mail. So I was like, let's do this. So yeah, here's looking less than cute. It's okay. We don't judge you. So this one comes in 39 different shades. And from what I can see on the website, it's a pretty damn good shade range. There is a nice uh, mixture of undertones as well. So we've got beige, neutral, golden, and red undertones. And then we've got uh, fair light, light medium, medium, medium tan, tan, deep tan, and rich. So there's a really good spectrum of shades. Now, let's have a little look at the description. Okay, so it says Faux Filter is back with the same full coverage and long-lasting properties that you know and love from the OG, but now with 24-hour flexible wear, a luminous matte finish, and it's fragrance-free. So it's meant to give like a really beautiful filtered effect to the skin, make your skin look really perfect, unify skin tone, blurs texture. Not, oh, they say that it's non cakey and they say that it's life proof. So waterproof, super long wear, uh, transfer proof, fade proof, sweat proof, humidity proof. Now I will just say it doesn't say shine proof or oil proof. So we'll see how it goes. It's meant to be a matte finish on the skin yet still look luminous. So still look like skin. It's obviously full coverage, uh, fragrance free, vegan. Yes. Oh, it also says mask proof, you guys. Oh, interesting. Okay, we're definitely going to test that out as part of the review as well. Mask proof. There you go. Now, as far as the packaging goes, it looks very similar to the original. This is the box of the brand new one. And then this is the original faux filter. I've still got it. I used it, put it back in the box and it's been sitting in a drawer because my skin hated it. Um, yeah, so pretty much the same. And from what I can tell, the external packaging of the foundation is pretty much the same also. So it comes in this black little jar. It's got like frost fading on the bottom it says Huda Beauty it's quite lovely you take the cap off oh that's a new touch there's a little pump applicator I feel like the original pump was just all black and you are getting 35 mil of product so let's get to the part that you're all waiting for and let's actually get it onto my skin I'm just priming one side of my face like I always do so that we can get a little bit of an idea of how this product performs with and without primer. So we've got a mattifying primer on and then this side is just my skincare. So let's get into this. I chose the shade 300N Latte. Um, 
I'm hoping that it matches. All right, so taking one of our Nakia Joy Cosmetics Pro Perfecting Sponges, I'm gonna pop a pump on here so we can have a little look at the formula and how it performs. As you can see, it is quite thick. It's not really running down too much. Um, it's quite a thick formula, this one. And I'm gonna start applying this onto, oh, she is quite thick, um, onto my skin. So, pressing it in. Oh, it is definitely very nice to not have to smell the scent of that original one. It was honestly like, I don't know if I just put way too much in or what it was, but it was like the kind of scent that would full on give you a migraine. It was insane. So just blending that all over the skin. It is applying quite nicely. Um, I'm not necessarily, like I wouldn't say, especially with like a sponge application, I wouldn't say that it's necessarily, yeah, it's not really looking like a filter. Like when I stretch my skin out like this, you can see little dots of pores. So it's kind of like what happened last time. I will say as far as coverage of the product goes, like pigmentation wise, it is full coverage. It's definitely canceled out any darkness that was on my skin, any redness, any discoloration. And I do feel like it has got a luminous matte sort of finish. So here's the application on this side with a sponge. I do think that it does look quite nice. Um, it is weird what's going on with my pores here. Just, it's just on my cheeks. Oh, that might be a bit better. And it's also happening on the side of my nose. Like it's really sunken into pores on the side of my nose here. All right, let's move on to the other side and try applying it with a brush instead. I'm gonna use Anna Kia Joe Cosmetics Luxe Foundation Brush to apply it. This is a really, really dense, uh, well, it's a duo fiber brush technically, but it's a stippling brush and it will give a really full coverage effect. So it's a good way to test a foundation with this because it should give us the absolute most perfect finish possible. Okay, so it does feel like it's got kind of like a sticky texture on the skin as you apply it. It doesn't necessarily like glide over the skin really smoothly. Um, but I will say the coverage here is looking absolutely beautiful. So I'm still getting that odd like pore sinking thing happening on the side of my nose. It's really like you've got to like really, really push the foundation in there to stop like these little black dots. Um, it's definitely got like a sticky feeling on the skin. Curious, like beyond curious to see if this is actually mask proof. I'm going to test it out. I will be wearing a mask and I will be reporting back on any transfer. But yeah, overall, I would say first impression of application, like it looks really beautiful on the skin. It looks really smooth. Um, I wouldn't say necessarily my skin looks 100% like filtered, um, but it does look really, really nice and the color match came out perfectly too. So I'm gonna zoom you guys in so you can see it nice and close up. So here is the side with no primer. I will also say, I don't think that there's a huge difference between applying it with a sponge or with a brush. I do think, yeah, you could use either either. Um, one thing that I will say is the side where I have applied the primer, I feel like my pores look much smaller and I feel like it looks like there's much less texture. On this side, I don't know, like I feel like it looks quite textured just here on my cheek. But yeah, it's sort of dried down to an almost matte kind of, yeah, demi-matte kind of a feel on the skin. It doesn't feel particularly heavy. It doesn't feel particularly, you know, like I wanna just wipe it off, like uncomfortable on the skin. It does feel quite nice and lightweight. And I do think that it looks really, really nice on the skin. So here it is close up again. This is my forehead. So you can see absolutely everything. Yeah, it looks pretty damn good. So what I'm gonna do is I'll jump off camera quickly, put the rest of my makeup on, maybe do my hair as well. <laughs> Just tied up in a bun like it's all wet. Um, and then I'll come back and I will show you what the foundation is looking like all powdered down. And then we're gonna start our wear tests. All right, so I just ended up doing a few things off camera. I've applied a little bit of concealer underneath my eyes. I have powdered it all down. I've done bronzer, blush, highlighter, my brows. I'm gonna do my eyes and my lips later on. Um, I just wanted to show you what the skin looked like when it was nice and fresh. 
Um, and honestly, now that it is powdered down, now that everything else is done, I honestly think that it looks beautiful. It is definitely very flawless looking. You know, there's no separating or anything. There's no caking. Um, the coverage is amazing. I only needed to put a little bit of concealer underneath my eyes. I didn't put concealer anywhere else and I didn't put concealer on my nose, which I usually always do. Um, powdered down beautifully. Everything blended really well on top as well. Um, honestly, at this point, nothing negative to say. Um, it really, like, it's just looking beautiful on my skin. Definitely very filtered and definitely very flawless. So what I'm going to do now is start the check-ins. Probably you'll see me in about six hours and then I'll come back in maybe another six hours for a final check-in. And based on that first impression, I'm already more impressed with this new formula than I was with the old formula. It does, it feels really, really lightweight and it looks beautiful on the skin. So yeah, fingers crossed when I come back, in six hours, that my skin is still looking this good. So yeah, I'll see you guys in about six hours. Please cross your fingers for me. <laughs> All right, so I'm back with my first check-in for the day. Um, firstly, I will let you guys know it's absolutely not mask proof. Hang on, let me zoom you in so I can explain as I go. Hopefully it's picking up on camera, but as you can see here, um, the makeup has transferred off the end of my nose. It hasn't sort of come off so much on my chin or anything around the bottom of my face, but it's definitely not mask proof, despite the fact that they made that claim on their website. So that's the first thing that I'm going to say. As far as the actual wear of the foundation, I have a terrible feeling that it might be starting to behave in the same way that the original one did. I don't know if you guys are going to be able to see, but it's starting to sort of separate here here, a little bit here, like I'm starting to get texture on the bottom of my chin there. But at the same time, not terribly. It's not like, oh my gosh, you know, I couldn't leave the house with that. Um, it doesn't look awful, but I do kind of feel like it's sort of starting to happen. I have developed a little bit of oil through the T-zone. I did have a mask on earlier, like I said. So the oil that was on the end of my nose has obviously transferred off, um, you know, with the makeup as well. But you can sort of see like a bit of a shine on the side of my nose here and a little bit on the other side. Other than that, it still looks really beautiful on the skin. Like I'm really happy with how my forehead's looking. I'm really happy with how my cheeks are looking. Everything overall is looking really good. The coverage is still really, really nice. There's just a little bit of texture and separation happening around my mouth. And obviously the makeup has transferred off my nose when wearing a mask. So I think what I will do to finish off this review, I'm just taking the same sponge that I used to apply it. Just going to cover that up this is just the foundation again i haven't actually used any concealer and i'm just gonna cover up the end of my nose there do a little touch up job so that we've still got some makeup on my nose um, and then we will continue the wear test i just want to show you my chin and stuff really really nice up close so that you can really really see it so cheeks chin hopefully the camera is showing it up hopefully you can see the texture and the separating that's sort of going on around there. And then my top lip. Oh, it's caked up around my nose too. You can see that there. And it's still, see like those little black dots on the side of my nose? It still hasn't, I don't know. It, it refused to go into those pores there basically. But yeah, pretty damn good I would say. All right guys, so we are back for our final check-in for the day. Our final look at how this foundation has worn. I have officially been wearing this for 12 hours now. Oh, I'm very sad to have to report that unfortunately the same thing has happened uh, as what happened with the original Huda Beauty formula. Um, although I will say definitely for sure, it is not as bad. Um, I definitely have got a lot of caking, a lot of separation. There's a lot of texture on the lower portions of my face. I'm um, just generally any areas where, you know, you get movement. So obviously around this area, because, you know, you're talking and smiling and all that kind of stuff. Pretty much from like my cheekbones upwards, it's not looking too bad. 
But yeah, when I zoom in, you're going to see um, kind of like exactly the situation that's happened here. Now, some positives are certainly really, really good to see. It's actually done quite well with oil control. Like I do think that despite the fact that we have some caking and some separation, um, I don't look as oily as I have with a lot of other foundations that we have tested here. I do feel like it's kept the shine fairly well at bay. The majority of the shine that's showing up is sort of like through the T-zone, like on the side of my nose here, um, down the center of my nose. And I will say I have also had some more transfer off the tip of my nose despite going back in and reapplying foundation to that area. Even though this is meant to be a completely transfer-proof formula, um, it certainly... Yeah, it definitely does transfer off, unfortunately. I haven't been in water, so I can't comment on whether it is waterproof, but from what I've seen, it's not mask proof, it's not transfer proof, and it's not really long wearing in the sense that, you know, it doesn't stay looking really flawless on the skin. I do think that it looked really nice for about the first six hours. So if you were only gonna be wearing your foundation for six hours, it would probably be okay. But anything longer than that, on an oily skin type, um, I'm probably gonna say I would recommend you avoiding this new formula. But let's zoom in so I can actually show you exactly what's happened on my chin so you know exactly what I mean. Hopefully you guys can see what I'm talking about. There's a lot of caking and a lot of separation around the lower part of my mouth here. So when I sort of stretch the skin out, you can see my skin underneath sort of coming out through the foundation. Um, it's happening all underneath on my jaw. The pores are really, really quite obvious around my jaw here. It's happening quite badly on this side, around the side of my lip. It's happening all on the top of my lip, to the caking around my nose. There's a lot of caking and a lot of texture here. Like it really just does look so, so super textured on my skin now. Um, typically the thing that I look for most in foundations is obviously the ability to help control shine like this one has, but also, you know, when my oils do come through, like we want to, like we really want to avoid this kind of caking and this kind of texture. Here is my nose close up. As you can see, some of the foundation has come off my nose. Like I said, um, it's definitely held in place a lot better than it did earlier, but I haven't worn a mask again today. So it was this morning that I was wearing that mask came right off. Uh, my forehead, though, I do have to say, does look quite nice. I've got a good situation going on on the forehead here, but yeah, based on what I've seen, this one, unfortunately, it's a no-go for me still. I did have really, really high hopes for this formula because, you know, it's, it's new, it, it's improved, they've gone back, they've worked on it, love the fact that it's fragrance-free, but all the promises that this one has... I don't know, for me and for my oily skin, unfortunately, it's just not living up to the test. For those of you who are after a really, really long wearing, all day, sweat proof, transfer proof, waterproof, cake proof, you know, just a foundation that genuinely lasts all day and stays looking genuinely perfect on the skin. I could not recommend the Estee Lauder Double Wear Foundation more. I feel like Estee Lauder delivers on everything that this foundation promises to deliver on um, and it does it really, really well. I do think I'll probably be able to mix this formula with some other foundations that I have here, maybe the Dior Backstage uh, or maybe even some lower coverage foundations that are really fantastic that really don't crease and cake and, you know, separate on the skin during the day. So I'll definitely keep testing it. But yeah, for me, as far as, you know, a wear test goes and as far as what I like my skin to look like at the end of the day, I can't see myself really reaching for this one. Um... I don't know. I don't want extra texture. It's not terrible and it's nowhere near, I've got to stress this, it's nowhere near as bad as the original formulation was, but I've got so many foundations and also, you know, heaps of drugstores, so heaps of really affordable foundations that don't do this on the skin. Um, yeah, so it's a bit of a disappointment, that one. I'm so sorry. I know that a lot of you were really, really excited about the fact that they'd gone back, you know, and read down this and especially because they'd finally removed the fragrance. Um... <sighs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry to disappoint you all, but you guys know, as always, I'm always going to give you the straight up honest results. I'm always going to show you my skin straight up so that you can really, really see how these things perform. And for me, it's a no. It's a no from me. So there you go, guys. I hope that you enjoyed seeing this foundation review. I hope that you found it helpful. Like I said, 
you know, I absolutely would be recommending that you spend your money on Estee Lauder instead of this one. I just think you're going to get a better finish. It's going to last longer and your skin's going to stay looking really perfect and smooth all day long. Um, but always, always curious to hear, have you tried this foundation? How did it go on your skin? How did it wear for you? Did you see similar results? Did you like it more than the old formula or did you like it less than the old formula? Um, I want to know absolutely everything that you are thinking. I want to know what you did today. I want to know what you ate. I want to know where you went. How many times did you go to the toilet? <laughs> no, tell me everything. <laughs> but please give this video a thumbs up if you did enjoy it. And like I said, I will link the original Huda Beauty foundation review down below. So if you missed that one or you want to just watch both so that you can get a bit of a comparison, it's available in the description bar. All right, guys, I hope you're having an amazing day. I love you all heaps and I'll catch you in my next video. Bye.